For me, 2025 means that all of the e-bike motors out there are gonna have 110 Newton meters or possibly more. So right here, I've got two bikes. This is a Toc Gram DK. Now you've seen me uh, ride this a little bit before, but I've been riding a lot more now actually, and I've done some pretty technical climbing on it. It's got an Asco Ultra C90 motor. This video, don't forget, is supported by Liat. Don't forget to go and check out all their new gear for 2025. Got the bike on the wrong way round, which is 110 Newton meters of motor. And this thing really flies up hills, actually quite fast so you've seen me riding this you can see in the clips over there the 110 newton meters though only comes in really when you're absolutely pinning it so you press the button it gives you the boost especially on the technical steep climbs how many people are going to use that feature i'm not so sure so i've had this bike a while i've been riding it a bit i'm only just started riding again recently so i actually need the extra boost let's say and i have to say in my opinion you probably need the super boost mode maybe 5% of the time. And does it make a huge difference to your life when you have it? Mm, maybe. But what have I got over here? I've got the Focus Jam Squared. It's a very similar bike to the TOC uh, Gram, which means that they're both uh, designed for sort of all mountain riding, really. Like and this has got the Bosch, the new Bosch CX motor on it. And it's not the CX Gen 5. Everyone keeps saying it, you're all wrong. It's actually a sixth generation of motor because the SX motor is actually the fifth generation. This is the sixth generation. For all those YouTubers out there who think they know what they're talking about. Bosch motor has currently 85 Newton meters. Now I use the word currently, very important point. By the end of this year, I am sure this motor will have a lot more torque. So what does that mean? Well, these two bikes are on the market. You can see their motors. You can see that they're actually working and they're gonna have all of the torque necessary to get you up those really steep hills that you only ride a few percent of the time. And there's some other bikes out there which have the same features. So we're talking the DJI. Do you know I like talking about a lot? <laughs> uh, no, I just got annoyed with the hype, to be honest, with that bike. But, you know, it's an interesting system. Definitely has the same level of kick as this. Probably a bit better controlled than this. Absolutely going to be on par with this eventually. There's also another bike company coming out with a very powerful talkie motor. Can't say what, but there's another one coming out. Very famous bike company. And also you've got, again, Shimano. Now, what are they gonna bring to the party? I suspect Shimano will come out with a 100, 110 Newton meter motor as well. Very well controlled, very smooth, very powerful. So what does this mean? That means by the end of this year, you'll find the whole market has gained between 10 and let's say 15 Newton meters of extra torque in a few small cases, it'll improve our lives. But what's already been on the market for a long time has been motors like this, the Asco C90 Ultra, with already that extra torque. And have they been selling like hotcakes? No. Also, don't forget the power play from Rocky Mountain. Also, another motor with 109 or 107 Newton meters or 108 Newton meters of torque. Again, a very torquey motor, lots of oomph up those steep climbs. Has it changed everyone's life? Is everyone buying that in hotcakes? No. So what am I saying? Well, what I'm saying is based on my riding experience of torquey motors, even with high peak powers, including the Sax RS, which is according to some websites, the most powerful, the most torquey motor out there. And I have ridden that motor. I would say, it's all a lot of unnecessary noise. So is it moving the market along, all of these extra power and torque numbers? Is it making everyone's life a lot better? I don't think so. I've been surprised by the performance of the less torquey motor at the moment. It's super smooth and super controlled. And I think that brings us to the point. There's no point to have all this power and torque if you don't have control. What you notice is it gives you, it's got more grunt, but at the same time, the control is a lot better compared to the CX Gen 4. I did say that in a previous review, and I still believe that. And in fact, the more time I ride this, the more I really understand how good this motor actually is. And if they do give it extra power and extra torque, I'm suspecting that this thing will probably be the market leader, and it'll be very hard for all the other brands or the other motor companies to catch up 
with the level of control that you have in the system. I would expect SRAM to come out with a more powerful, more torquey motor, but they've already got one, the 90 Newton meter SRAM motor, which is in a gas gas, it's on uh, transition, it's on, uh, well, it was on nuke proof, which is no more. One defining feature about this motor is it has the same bolt pattern as the Shimano EP801, which means it will fit any Shimano bike. This is the Tok Gram DK, and it comes with the Ascol motor, but you can also have a Shimano motor. You can choose your motor. And I think that's an interesting point. And this is the very first bike company in the world to produce one bike with two different motor options. Now, I think that's more interesting, in my opinion, having the ability to take the lifespan of these bikes forward with you. So for example, if your old Shimano equipped uh, bike breaks and the motor is no more and it costs you 700 euros to or a thousand euros to replace it and the battery why not have the option to switch it out for a certified high quality motor a bit like the Ascol. From what I've read of all the comments that you guys have written having the ability to upgrade and switch the motor to a different brand or whatever you feel like is definitely a positive option and something that you guys really want. If we look at the new Bosch CX it's got a two bolt pattern thing there. So you've got one bolt here, one bolt there. It means that they can make the pivot. There's now no longer any necessity to have a connection here. So they can change the pivot points on the chain stay and make it function a lot better. It also makes the motors a little bit more compact. So if we have a look at this classic three bolt pattern here of the Shimano motor, it's very important if you want to be able to fit an Asco into a Shimano pattern that you have the frame cut out so it can actually has the space to match it. This bike does have that. They didn't actually perceive it to be that way it kept, they just happened to figure out that it fitted so obviously they've offered this option one of the first companies in the world to do that which i think is a very clever thing to do this brings me to the last point today which i want to talk about and it's all about graphics cards nvidia just launched at ces uh, a brand new graphics card the 5090 now some of the other brands that take that graphics card as their base and they produce other graphics cards but with their branding like MSI, things like that, they released their own versions of that 5090 graphics card or one of the other brands, I can't remember exactly which one. It had a marketing slogan which said, this has zero dB, which means the fans switch off. So this brings me to sort of the conclusion of this little video, which is, are you actually getting the information you need about riding these bikes and enjoying them and having the necessary details from a technical point of view that you require? Or are you being given just marketing?